Hello everybody and welcome back. Today we are going to start a new series for uh, 3ds Max basically and in this series we are going to talk everything about 3ds Max. This is the first video and in this one we are going to talk about the basics of 3ds Max. It's, it's going to be essentially the user interface so that you can understand where you can find the things that are required. So let's get started. Now as you can see when you open up the 3ds Max you're going to have this quad menu so that means you're going to have three different views open and one perspective view. In order to change any of these views you you can basically click on any of these and whichever gets highlighted that's the one which is selected so if i want to go and change this front view to any other view okay i can click on front and i can change to back or left or right whichever i want and you can also see the shortcuts here so that means if i hit top i can have the top view here now in order to maximize any view just select any viewport and click alt and w it will maximize it in every single viewport you're gonna have this Q. If in your screen it is way smaller and you can't see what's written on top of it, so basically you can configure that. So go there and here change the view cube size to large, and there you go. Now it is the larger size, and you can also change the opacity for this one so that it doesn't look that ugly, you know. <laughs> I'm gonna hit back to normal because I'm, I'm fine with that. Now, if you click on any of these views, you can basically go to that view. So it's front, right, and then top as well. So that's how it goes. Anyways, uh, let's see how we can create different objects in 3S Max. Now, we can see that there are two different ways that we can do that. Either you could go to the top and hit on create. And these are different types of the objects or shapes, lights, cameras, helpers, all of the things that you can create in 3ds Max. Or you could basically come to the right side. So in the right side, these are the same things that you can find over there. So as you can see, we have this standard uh, simple objects. We have the lights, cameras, helpers, and so on and so forth. Let's talk about one of these guys, let's say. If I click, I can switch to the other option that I have. So in each of these menus, you're going to have some other extra options so i'll stick to the first one and click on extended and i click on chamfered box now you only have to click hold your mouse and just drag so that that's the first one release your mouse and go that's the height and click now i have created this box and let's first name it so it comes to the right side and uh let's call it the box if you want to change the color uh i tend to like the gray one there you go so what we can do is that we can basically go to the second option that's modify click on the object and here we can give different units now you might be thinking that these are the fit units and how come we can change the units because when you start the 3s max it does not ask for the units so in order to change those you can basically go to the top go to customize unit setup now you'll be greeted with the screen and 3s max has two types of units there are the display units and they're the system units display units are whatever you see here so in my case i have set it to fraction fit but if you go to the unit setup you can see that the backend units are in inches so if you're going to export the scene to any other software package you have to take into consideration these units let's hit okay i'll come here either i can click on these guys and let's hit four 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 and by the way if you right click on any of these options it will just make those guys to the default for example on the top one i have created a lot of these segments so i can just right click come to the single segment again put a value for the filler because it looks cooler and we can create these segments in like different directions now you can't see these segments here but if you hit, hit alt and w in the other menus you can see those segments in order to see them here just hit f3 so if you hit f4 you can basically see all of those segments on top of the shaded object as well so that's going to be basically edged faces we have talked how to change the parameters of the object and it is going to be similar for all of the objects that we have basically go to plus create the object go to modify and then you can change the parameters now on the bottom we have like generate uh, mapping coordinates so that's for the uvs uh, you can create real world map size coordinates as well okay that's that so if you right click you're going to be greeted with different options these options are going to change basically these top ones are going to stay same these ones 
as well but if i go convert and convert it to editable poly that's one of the object types in 3ds max i right click now it's going to give me options that are related to the editable poly if i change it to editable mesh the options are going to change so i'll stick to editable poly for now uh, these are the edges, faces, uh, and vertices, and you can basically click and play around with any of those guys if you want to. So that's how you create the objects and modify them as well. Now, there's a lot more to it than what we have discussed here, obviously, but it was just to introduce you that how we can basically create the objects and make some modifications. Obviously, we have the whole list of modifiers as well. So this is the non-destructive way of modifying the objects in 3ds Max. So you put the modifier on, make the changes. If you don't want it, just remove the modifier and the original object would be there. That's done. Uh, let's see what we got here. If I come here, I can change the views. Basically, we, we talked about these guys already if you click seven on the keyboard you can basically check the number of polygons or the vertices and how many fps you are getting at the time cool let's move to the top you're not going to be talking about all of these guys because there are tons of options and you're not going to be going into details as well for the timing i just want you to know that these options are here so that when we come down and talk about those guys in detail in the next tutorials you know where to find what now obviously these first two options are going to be uh redo and undo forget about those these next two options are for linking we're not going to be talking about those right now the next one is important and let me tell you why let me go ahead and create uh, a camera in the scene now we have two types of different objects and if i click and select i can select any of these objects let's say in the scene i have like hundreds of different objects and obviously it's going to contain tons of lights cameras helpers and uh i mean the list goes on and on so what if i just want to select only the geometry so basically i go there i click on the geometry so now if i try to select the camera it won't be selected and i i can only select the cube because that's the geometry if you create this selection rectangle from left to right or right to left uh it is different in autocad so what if you want to select the objects that are completely within the box it's not that whatever selects it, whatever touches the object, it gets selected. So in order to change that, click on this menu. And then that means it's only going to be selected if it comes within the box. The default selection is going to be rectangular, but you can change these. You see on the top, we have this one, this option that is rectangular selection tool. There's an arrow down below, just click and hold there. And you can see other options as well, like circular. There's a spray paint as well, which is really cool. There's a lasso tool. We have created the object, but how do we go and navigate in 3ds Max? So if you click and hold the middle mouse button, you can basically pan around. If you hit Alt and click middle mouse button, you can basically rotate. And if you move your uh, mouse wheel front and back, you can basically zoom in and out of the object. Now you'll notice that wherever the mouse cursor is, the zoom goes to that. And if you have like plenty of different objects, you can basically select one of those guys and it will zoom there as well. Sometimes it so happens that we go far, far away and we don't know where the object is. Obviously this camera, if I delete it right now, I don't know where the object is. Seriously, I have no idea. So I can just hit uh, Control A, select all, and I hit Z and it will zoom to the selection. All right. And if we click here, you can basically see how many objects you have selected as well. If you want to select objects, it's going to be Q. As you can see here, this is select object. If you hit W, it's going to go into move menu. E is going to rotate and R is going to scale. Let's go to W for move. If you want to stick to a single direction, you can basically move in that single direction. Let's say I want to move in the two directions at the same time. So if I hover over these boxes, which are between these axes, I can move in two directions as well. So this one is going to move in the red and green direction and same goes for the other ones as well. Similar thing happens if I hit E and go to rotate. I can either hover over any of these axes and I rotate around those. And you can see that if I'm rotating and I don't want the action to be done, I just hit right click and it just goes back to default. If I select between those axes, it will rotate the object in those two axes. Cool. Same goes for the, for the R. If you want to uniformly scale, just stick to the center and click and hold outside. It will scale. If you want to scale in two directions, let's say these two guys, the green one and the blue one, you can click there and then move the object in that direction. You can see this is doing that because it's scaling in these two directions and not in the red one. And same goes for these guys as well. All right. And if you want to obviously scale in a single direction, you just come and come to the tip and just click and drag. Right click to go back. The next one 
all of these guys are the snaps different types of snaps if you right click on any of these guys you can check the options that we have that we can change uh, in that same goes for the uh, w e and r if you right click on any of these guys you can basically put the values in either absolute terms or uh, offset from whatever we have at the moment so in you can basically give uh, a certain value so that you know how much you are moving it is really really important for uh, architectural works let's hit cancel as you can see that the shortcuts are for the snaps are given so s for simple snaps a for angle and uh, that's the precision snap and so on and so forth so snap toggle for the timing if i right click i can see that i can snap to perpendicular to a vertex and to a midpoint and uh, these guys as well so if i click on any of the objects and i go here you can see that i can basically snap to vertices or different faces or any of those options that i had selected so if i hit s i can go out of the snap menu same goes for the angle if i hit a and i go right click i can determine the different options here basically what angle is going to be uh, so each of my rotation is going to be at five degrees let's see how if i hit e you can see it's 15 20 25 45 so it's going to be stick to five degree angle increment so i can change there as well let's go out of that the next one is really important is the selection set it comes really handy when you have like tons of different objects and you don't want to like select and deselect objects and come down to your selection of your choice what that means is that if you have let's say 100 different objects and uh, in the geometry you basically are going to even if you come here and go to this menu hit the geometry it's going to select all of the geometry which is really really difficult so there are a couple of different ways in order to manage that you can either define the layers and work in the layers for example you put all of the doors in single layer put all of the vegetation in a single layer put all of the uh, other objects of certain types like the core items in a single layer so uh, you can just turn off those layers which you can basically do here uh, do that from here basically this is the toggle layer explorer if you click here uh, come to the bottom let me bring it here so as you can see that if I click and drag here these are different objects types that I, I can include and then I can give it to different layers right now everything that's going to be created is going to be within the same zero default layer which is not something to be recommended so whatever you create you can basically name this name the name the items that's why we did that and then you put them in a certain layer that you want to so that you can basically come here and filter them out it makes your life a whole lot easier and you can also see the option down below here as well about the selection set in order to make the selection set it is really easy let me create a, another object I come here I select these two guys and I say ball now I deselect it if I come here and click on ball it's going to select all of those guys so it's really handy if you want to manage the selection you can basically click here and it's going to give you all of the selection sets that you have you can basically include the items in the selection set you can remove them and there's there are other options as well the next one is the mirror command we're not going to be talking about mirror or alignment at the time being uh, if you have already talked about the layer explorer and the next one is the scene explorer so that basically gives you the list of all of the objects in your scene you can filter them out you can search the items from here and do any of the other things that you want with them let's keep these guys then we have the last three t parts which are basically your rendering options the first one in the render setup if you click that or you can come here at the top and go to rendering and render setup it is going to give you the same option or you can hit f10 and it's going to give you all of the options that we have here you can change the resolution of the basically the output size and you can if you're using the v-ray you can change all of these settings here as well and here you can see which is the default render engine that you have selected you can see at the top we have the workspaces which we, uh, we can basically uh, customize our workspace any way we want and then we can create another workspace basically here so that we don't have to change every single time we reset to any of these other menus you can basically go back to your own created workspace now we haven't talked about one thing here how you can basically dock different items so let's say I come here and this is the option that I want you see these two lines at the top basically you click them and it's going to give you this menu now it's, this one is a floating toolbar when you're done using them you can basically cancel it out to the menus which are on the right side or which ones are at the top you can basically click on these guys if you come to the lines here at the start you can click and drag it's gonna bring it here you can easily dock it here bring it back dock it here there are plenty of other options that you can do I like it here so I'm gonna put it back there 
as well. I'll hit cancel. These are the basic uh, things that you're going to do in 3ds Max, the very, very bare minimum basics. By the way, we forgot to talk about one thing. That's about the move command. As you are well aware now that in order to do the same thing, there are multiple ways in which you can do that. You can, you know, for example, if you want to create objects, you can either go there or you can go there as well. If you want to move objects and let's say it, I hit W, I can either right click on these guys, put the values here, or I can right uh, put the values here at the bottom as well. Now, there's one last thing that I would like to tell you because that's really important and that is defining uh, the shortcuts. Basically, you go to customize and then you hit hotkey editor and these are all of the shortcuts that we have in 3ds Max. You can basically go to like different types of categories, different object types like for editable poly. These are the hotkeys that are defined. You can select on any of these. You can remove them. You can assign new keys here as well. In 3ds Max, it's really important that you define the shortcuts otherwise it's going to make your life miserable because there are tons of different menus and it becomes really difficult okay so that's all for today uh, in the next videos we'll be talking about uh, these features in detail and plenty more so stay tuned for that